I want to welcome everyone out to Springfield Baptist Church, First Baptist Church this morning, Rogerville, Alabama. Uh, got several to remember for prayer, and we'll we'll pray over them, over these names here in just a minute. Uh, but I want to let everybody know that we, we are having breakfast next Saturday morning, uh, starting at 8 o'clock, and then we'll be working on the cleaning the parsonage up uh, after that. And uh, we hope you can join us for that. At this time, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and we'll get, then we'll get started with our sermon this morning. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together in your house. And, uh, Lord, thank you for each one that's uh, made their way out this morning and uh, those that are joining us online. Lord, we, we lift up this morning uh, the following names. Uh, Jimmy Ellis. Lord, you know uh, everything that uh, he and Miss Glendora are facing. And Lord, uh, I just ask you to uh, be with those doctors and nurses as they tend to him. And also Miss Glendora, she waits, uh, is waiting to get her uh, leg. Uh, we just ask you to be with them ask you to be with uh, mom and daddy, Lord, uh, mom and her arm, and daddy is his, in his task this week. ask you to be with this beaver's baby, Lord, with, and Haley and Parker, uh, this baby's parents. And, uh, Lord, you, you know uh, the situation there. And, uh, Lord, ask you to be with these expecting mothers and their families, Jonna Campbell and Savannah Butler. And, Lord, uh, as the days approach for these babies to be born, we just ask you to bless these these families as they welcome these babies into their homes. And uh, Lord, I ask you to be with Jessica Thigpen, Lord, that you would uh, just heal her body. And uh, Lord, always uh, be with our country, our leaders, those that uh, make decisions uh, each and every day that affect our lives that particular day and for months, days, weeks, years to come. And, Lord, I, I pray that each one of us in this country, United, this great country, the United States, would turn to you, seek your face before making any decisions, big, small, medium, what, whatever decisions we have to make. And, uh, Lord, uh, I ask you to bless our church, those that uh, comes in and out these doors and visits with us online. And, Lord, just be with us today as we look to your word. If there be one that's lost and undone without you, I ask you to save them before it's everlasting too late. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you look with me this morning to the book of Hosea, uh, chapter number four. Uh, last week, we I told you to find the book of Daniel and uh, turn two books over. And this morning, you can find the book of Daniel. You can turn one book over toward the New Testament. And uh, there you'll find the, the book of Hosea. And we're going to be looking at Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 6. In Hosea 4 and verse 6, it says this, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. I want to give you a little bit of background uh, about this. Uh, some, uh, let me get the years right. My, my Schofield Bible here uh, has this dated as uh, 785 B.C. And uh, I'm looking for uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, and it's got that dated as uh, 975 B.C., so about 200 years before this, if I'm if uh, those Schofield dates are correct, a fellow by the name of Jeroboam became king. And uh, he decided it would be a tremendous idea to forsake God. And not only to forsake God, he thought that would be a tremendous idea, but to set up other things that folks could worship. 
and uh, in hopes that the divided kingdom, uh, he didn't want the people to get no ideas about uh, putting it back together. He liked it like it was. And uh, so he set up different idols for, for them to worship as reminders of, uh, you know, they did need to be worshiping, but uh, he set up these false gods for them to worship. Uh, and so here we are, some about 200 years later, this is what happened. And uh, you say, well, that, it was brought up, it was bred up in them. That, that, that's all they knew. Well, maybe so. But uh, I keep, ever since we went through the, the book of Exodus, and uh, by the way, this verse has already always been there. Uh, it just, uh, God just really slapped me upside the heart when I read this verse. If you'll turn over with me to Exodus chapter 1, in, in verse number 8. Exodus chapter 1 and verse number 8. And that's when I came up with the, the idea for the song. I'm, it's still out there, Justin. It's just hasn't been put down on paper yet. You know, I borrowed a few words from this song and that song, but it keeps telling the story. Be faithful and true. Don't let the name of Jesus stop with you. Just, just borrowed a few words from here and there. And uh, why do we not let the name of Jesus stop with us? Because if we do, there will come a generation that when they hear name of, the name of Jesus brought up, they'll have that question. Who? Who are y'all talking about? Who is that? Who is this Jesus that you're speaking of? Uh you look down to Exodus 1 and verse 8. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Joseph, one of the sons of Israel, one of the sons of Jacob. You say, well, why is that so important? Because God had placed Joseph in the land of Egypt. And because of the providence of God in Joseph's life, he not only saved the nation of Egypt, he not only saved the nation of Israel, but he saved many nations from perishing off the face of the earth because he followed God's leadership when he was placed in a leadership position in the land of Egypt. God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. And because of, the, because of him, because of God using him, placing him in that position, many, many lives were spared. But time went on, and they quit talking. I believe they quit talking about Joseph and what he'd done. They quit talking about Joseph and how God had used him, how God had blessed him. You see, the, night, the nation of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years. And now we arrive at this point where here's a guy in charge, or are they fixing to be in slaves for 400 years? And uh, here comes the Pharaoh up, the king up, that did not know who Joseph was. Never, doubtless had never heard of him. And that's when the enslavement started and they were going to be slaves for some 400 years because he forgot. They forgot to keep telling the story of how God blessed Joseph and how God had blessed them. What are you and I to do? Did you know that there are folks that it would be all right if the, the doors here were closed? And I just ain't saying they picking on Springfield First Baptist Church. All the Baptist churches, it'd be all right if they closed. And you say, well, what they got wrong with Baptist? Well, let, let's branch out a little bit. All the Presbyterian churches, Cumberland Presbyterian churches, Church of Christ, Methodist, Congregational Methodist, 
United Methodist. And we could go on and on and on. It'd be all right if all doors were closed for some folks. And this group of people here, they decided one day that it would be all right not to know anything about God. One group of folks, uh, I think I've talked about them before, Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown, the commentary critical and explanatory on the whole Bible says this, that the their ignorance, their lack of knowledge, they're not knowing about God and his ways, it was willful. Just the same as when we was in school and we, if we decided, well, I ain't going to learn them fractions. I ain't never going to have to use them fractions in my life. And I, mm, no, willful. You can't teach me because I ain't willing to learn. But I want you to look back to Hosea 4 and verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Oh, we don't need to quit talking about Jesus. We don't need to quit learning about Jesus. A couple things I want to point out to you that Paul wrote to Timothy. If you'll turn over with me to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, then we'll go over mine. Mine's chapter 2, 15 is on one side of the book and uh, one side of the page, and uh, the other scripture is on the, just the opposite side of the page. And I was reading this week, and I just got a smile on my face because uh, this one commentator I was reading this week said, uh, if you got a Bible like me, turn the page so-and-so. And I remember back in the day that uh, most everybody in the church house would have a Schofield Bible, and you didn't really have to tell what book of the Bible you was in. Didn't have, if you turned to Hosea, you didn't have to, turn, have to say, uh, go to Daniel and turn one back to the Old Testament. You just tell them to tell everybody what uh, page you was on, and uh, most everybody had the same kind of Bible. But uh, that was days ago. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul writes to Timothy, I believe he's writing to us, and it's a scripture that we've preached on not long, too long ago, and, uh, and it still says this, study to show thyself approved unto God. And not meaning to, to use uh, Saturday Night Live as a, continue using Saturday Night Live as a, uh, source of information but I just want to remind you about that sketch that I shared with you from time to time about the they were having a sketch on Saturday Night Live one night about it is involved uh, the game show who wants to be a millionaire and you know you got three lifelines and you could work your way up to a million dollars and there were certain steps as you went up through there that you got guaranteed and uh, usually they start out with an easy question, and that, that fellow that was playing the contestant on that, in that skit got the first question right, as most of the time they did. And they got ready to do the second question. I don't even think they asked if uh, you want to go on or not. And he said, oh, whoops, I'm done. $100, I'm good, I'm ready to go home, just give me my check. Too many times... That's what happens to Christians and their Bible. Oh, I didn't know that. Ain't no use of me reading that. But yet, Paul still writes to Timothy. He still writes to us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to study, to show thyself approved. How long has it been since you read the Bible through? Just asking. Just throwing that out. Here we are in uh, May. How long has it been since you read the Bible all the way through? Make sure that everything's there that you remembered. Just a question. 
study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you look over to 2 Timothy 4 and verse number 2. He led him in verse 1 number 1 saying, I charge thee. And then he says, this is what needs to happen. This is what needs to transpire. Timothy, preach the word. Several years ago. Telling you stories this morning, I've told you before, but here we are. Several years ago, we were having a revival services, church I, I'm serving, and we had invited a, a different pastor to speak on each night. And I got a phone call that I have ne had never gotten before, have never gotten since. It's a phone call that I have never made. And as long as I'm in my right mind, I will never make. And on the other end was one of the pastors that was coming. And he said, Brother Marty, what would you like me to preach on? You ever been in one of them situations where some people ask you something? People say something to you and you just had a loss of words? That was me. I could not believe that I was being called and asked that question. I could not believe that I was being asked that. Now, that's a question. He should ask God. God, what would you have me to preach for these folks? What scripture would you want me to use? I don't know if he thought God was too busy. I don't know. I'll call Marty and see what he says. So here's my response after I, I gathered myself. Preach the word. Preach the word. Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. You say, hey, that, that's good. He's writing that to you, Marty. Preach the word. Let me bust your bubble. You and I, pastor, preacher, evangelist, or not. But if we're children of God, each and every day, we're preaching the word. By the life we live, by the example we set, yeah, preach the word. Be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. But you see, the folks in Hosea's day had quit. Now, uh, had a pandemic happen? You say, oh, Marty, don't get on that. I'm just asking. Had a pandemic happened? Is that why they quit? Just asking. That's just a little extra on the side. Because I'm afraid for some, for some, has this pandemic been serious? Yes. I think it's more serious than a lot of folks have taken it for. And it's still more serious than a lot of people taking it for. But some people use it as an excuse to just quit. Oh, I, I, oh hey man, I've got me another excuse in my pocket now. Sometimes 
So just like in Hosea's day, they chose no God, no Bible, no Scripture, nothing. It was willful. Now, I'm not going to tell you the example that David, Amy's daddy, used to use, but I, I took his example and made one of my own. It's not bad to be ignorant. Because we was born that way. It's terrible to stay that way. Now he used to use another example. And if you want to ask me on the way out this morning, what, what example did he used to use? I'll let you know. But uh, I, that, that's my own. It's not bad to be ignorant, but it's bad to stay that way. And these particular folks here had decided ignorance is bliss. I'm staying that way. Anything about God? Uh-uh. No, not for me. I've, I've, I've got enough. Like the skit on Saturday Night Live. That's enough. I don't need any more. There's a house on such and such street in such and such country smack in the middle of Europe. How many of y'all want to move there? How many of y'all want to go there and spend the rest of your life in such and such house, on such and such street, such and such country, smack in the, right in the middle of Europe? You say, well, Marty, give me some more information. I'm going to tell you, no, I'm not going to give you no more information. Do you want to go or do you not? All your expenses will be paid. You won't have to do nothing, but it's, it's a house on such and such street, such and such country, smack dab in the middle of Europe. You say, well, I need some more information. And I'd have to agree with you. I would need some information about what kind of house it was, what kind of, if any repairs need to be made, who lives around that house, where exactly that house was. But yet there are children of God that go day by day by day, never opens up their script, never opens up scripture, never try to learn more about God, and we're going to spend all eternity with Him, friend. We've got to get serious about knowing more about our heavenly Father. He's given us His Word to study. He's given us his word to proclaim. And then as in Hosea's day, he says this, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I was reading this week about this preacher. that grew up with a daddy in his house. And this is illustration that he gave during one of his sermons. He said, I, I knew my daddy, but I did not know that much about my daddy. He said, all I knew as the little feller was that he'd get up in the morning and he'd leave. And that evening, he'd come back home. Did not know what he did in between those two times. I just knew that he left and I knew that he'd come back home. Did you know that later on in life, he inquired about what happened between them two times. And you say, well, well, of course he did. He wanted to know more about his daddy. Exactly. 
Exactly. He just, his dad just happened to sell Buicks for a living. But he had up to a certain point in life to when he inquired, Daddy, what you do? What do you do when you leave home? Where do you go? What do you do during the day? He never knew until he asked. There are lots of things that I need to learn about my Heavenly Father. He said, well, Marty, study. Amen. I'm striving. I'm striving. There are many things that each one of us need to know about our Heavenly Father. And let me tell you where point, part A starts. Part A starts with a relationship with Him. Those of you that are parents, let me paint you this picture. Your child's got a test coming up. When do you tell them to study? Do you tell them to wait till the morning of? Or do you tell them to wait till the night before? Or do you tell them as soon as they know a test is coming to start studying? I think I know the answer. Did y'all know that Jesus is coming? Did y'all know that the book of Hebrews chapter 9 said, tells us this? That it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment? Now, uh, some of y'all have heard this story and some of you hadn't. And uh, I asked, Jimmy was here a month or so ago and he had some tests coming up. And I, I was joking around with him. I said, Jimmy, you're, you ain't going to be like that girl I, 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 learned, I knew one time. That, uh, are you studying for these tests? And he just looked, he, you know how Jimmy got them look? He just looked at me. But I knew a girl one time that her mother asked her if she was going to play basketball. And uh, she said, no, Mama, I, I'm not going to play basketball because I have to take them drug tests, and I, I don't know anything about drugs. I'm going to have to study up for, for them, Mama. Three years later, she just, I reckon she'd studied up enough she played basketball. And so whenever they came out to school, Lexington to give the drug test for the athletes, I'd go down there and tell them, I said, uh, Whatever y'all do, don't mark E on any question. And if they ask you what lysergic acid diaphamide is, that's LSD. Why, why are you telling us that? I said, what's a drug test? When do we tell them to study? When are we going to get ready for the judgment? We're going to wait till the day before. We're going to wait till the morning of. Or we're going to study right now. These people decided, nah, God's word, nah, not for me. Turn over with me to Romans chapter 10. And this is kind of a picture of what Jeroboam did here in Romans 10, verse 3. It says in verse 3, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and it, I'm going to say it again, it's not bad to be ignorant, it's bad to stay that way. Because our righteousness, friends, the Bible says this, our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. So being ignorant about God's righteousness, they went about to establish their own righteousness. More, let me just throw this in. 
In other words, they went about making more filthy rags. Because the only way you and I can be righteous is through Jesus Christ. So they went about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. J. Vernon McGee says the background of their problem here in Hosea chapter 4 was a lack of knowledge of God and his word. He says, my friend, if you are a Christian, the minute you get away from the word of God, you are doomed to failure in the Christian life. Tests are coming up. You say, what test? It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Where are you going to spend eternity? It's going to be in one of two places. You're going to be either with God, or you're going to be in the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. God spoke to you. God said it's time to be saved. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. J. Vernon McGee says, the Bible makes it crystal clear that we do not live the Christian life by this gimmick, that method over there, but by a personal knowledge of the Word of God. It's not what so-and-so knows. It's not what the preacher knows. It's not what the evangelist knows. It's what we as individuals no. If you look back to Hosea 4 and verse 6, we're, we'll finish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget Thy children. Oh, we want to build things up for the generations to come. Don't forget about building up spiritual standing as well. Know God. Know His Word. Learn more about Him today than you knew yesterday. Learn more about Him today. And therefore, know more about Him today than you did yesterday. Ignorance, it's not bad to have, but it's bad to keep. And friends, this day and time, we're without excuse. We are without excuse. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for giving your word to us. You just didn't leave us here without a guide. Your word is our guide. Thank you, Lord, for those of us that have put your, our trust in you. You've given us a comforter, the Holy Spirit, to teach us about your word. Part of his job is to teach us about your word. Oh, may we be about your business. Lord, if there's one lost today, you save them before it's too late. Draw us as your children closer to you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing a song of invitation. And uh, we plan to be back online tonight, Lord willing, at 6 o'clock. We hope you be here with us, either online or in person.